New laws on drugs and driving are in place across England and Wales. This video aims to tell you more about those laws, what they cover and why it's important to understand the risks that can go with driving if you've taken a drug. Whether it's an illicit substance, an over-the-counter medicine, a medical prescription or a herbal supplement. Even if you're not using drugs of any sort at the moment, you may know someone who is. They could be anyone using certain flu remedies, someone who's just started taking a new medicine, teenagers helping themselves to a parent's tranquilizers, people taking prescription medicines for all kinds of conditions, from high blood pressure to nausea and sleeping disorders, people of any age taking tablets to counter depression, stress or anxiety, and hay fever sufferers using certain over-the-counter medicines. The key message is to ensure you do not get in a car if you suspect the driver could be under the influence of drugs. Taking certain substances affects your ability to drive safely. The new laws have removed the requirement for police to prove that a driver is impaired by drugs so that if a blood test shows that certain drugs, both illegal and prescription, are present above the specified limits, then the driver will have committed an offence. This doesn't mean that it's now OK to drive after taking a drug that's not included in the new law. It will remain an offence to drive if you're impaired by any substance. So the message is, if you're in any doubt, don't get behind the wheel. We'll look at the legal side of things in a bit more detail shortly. Different drugs affect you in different ways and for different lengths of time. The effects will vary according to the individual person, the drug type, the dosage, the length of time the drug stays in your body and whether the drug has been taken on its own or in combination with other drugs or alcohol. Drugs can affect your vision, your hearing, your reaction time, your perception of risk and your ability to carry out a variety of tasks. You may feel sleepy, sick, dizzy or unable to move quickly. Your vision may be blurred and you may also find it hard to focus or pay attention. Symptoms like this make you much more likely to be involved in a collision. But the dangerous part of it is that you won't be aware of how impaired you might be. Professor Andrew Parks is Chief Scientist at the Transport Research Laboratory. There's a lot of drugs out there and they act differently on different people and the picture for road safety is really complicated but they all have an effect on driving none of them make driving better at all um, they have different patterns of impact on driving some slow people's reactions down some take control of the vehicle make that more difficult and most importantly a lot of them change people's attitudes towards risk and risk judgment and that has a, an immediate impact on road safety when we drive, it's vital that nothing gets in the way of our ability to concentrate. We need to be alert and observant, giving ourselves time and space to spot hazards early. By ensuring we're fit to drive, we're playing our part to reduce risk for ourselves and those around us. Road crashes lead to thousands of deaths and serious life-changing injuries every year. And for everyone killed or seriously injured, there are far-reaching consequences for families, relationships and communities. The human impact of a road collision is enormous. So the law has been extended and works on the same principle as drink driving offences. Police officers have new drug screening devices which they can use at the roadside to establish the presence of drugs in your system. The test kit works by taking a swab of saliva or they'll carry out what's known as a field impairment test. PC Martin Smith works for the Central Motorway Police Group. If a driver fails a test at the roadside, then they will be arrested. That gives us, we do have a power of arrest under that relevant law under Section 5 out of Road Traffic Act. That gives us a power to arrest the driver who provides positive indication on a drug wipe test. Obviously, after arrest, you are taken to a police station and then there's a requirement for you to provide a blood sample. The penalties for drug driving are understandably harsh. If you're convicted, you'll receive a minimum one-year driving ban, an unlimited fine, up to six months in prison and a criminal record. Your driving licence will also show for 11 years that you've been convicted for drug driving. Other consequences of a drug driving ban include a loss of independence. After all, you won't be allowed to drive. A big rise in your car insurance premium once you get your licence back, and you might be refused cover altogether. If you drive for work, your employer will see your conviction on your license, possible refusal of entry into other countries such as the USA. But the true consequences of a drug driving ban are summed up by PC Martin Smith. Consequences of a conviction ruined life. It's as simple as that because there's a stigma attached to it. There's a stigma attached to drink driving. It's not socially acceptable. 
years gone by, maybe it was, but as times progressed and public attitudes have changed, then drink driving and drug driving are pretty much lumped together in the same bag as being socially unacceptable. They cause death, they cause misery, they cause destruction. Protect yourself and those you love by following these simple but potentially life-saving tips. Don't travel in a car driven by someone you suspect has taken drugs. Never take one drug to ward off the effects of another. If you're concerned about a relative who may unwittingly be at risk because of the medicines they're taking, then you need to step in to help. Now, I think there's an important role that family members can play in all this because, um, as we discussed earlier, the driver themselves probably isn't going to be aware of how their driving behaviour has changed. It's very difficult to self-calibrate, self as we say. But if the family member has detected that there's been a change, I think it's important to discuss it with the driver themselves, but also um, to engage with the GP and, and for the GPs themselves to become more aware of the impact that some of these drugs are having in, in, with the driving population. If you take one or more of the eight medicines now covered by the law, then you're not committing an offence as long as you can show it was legitimately supplied and you're taking it as directed. It would be sensible to keep evidence of any prescription with you when you travel. If you're in any doubt about taking drugs and driving, please consult your healthcare professional.